Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are rejoining the crew of the Artemis here in orbit of the moon. As you can see, they are uh, super excited to be here, and with all the great view. Uh, I was, I made a few small orbital adjustments here, and hopefully you can read the numbers a little better now, that our apoapsis is 209.165 kilometers, our periapsis is 40.315 kilometers, which is all within the parameters of the contract. And boom, after uh, reloading the craft, it gave me uh, all check marks across the board. We're just waiting to orbit one day, 18 hours and 59 minutes. You can tell I have just made these uh, adjustments. So we're just going to go ahead and let them time warp. Yeah, 168 days of life support left for our crew here, so they are in no danger of uh, needing to burn for home early. Uh, the only other issue with the uh, mission last episode was the uh, recorded impact with the seismometer. We uh, we hit the moon with something. We had a seismometer there, but it didn't give me the option to like uh, start recording seismic activity. It just wanted to broadcast home. So I don't know if maybe I put the wrong part on that lander. As far as I know, it's the only seismometer that works or you know has any options for anything. But uh, maybe you guys know better than I do and can let me know in the comments below. And, uh, but yeah, we landed the seismometer, we crashed something into the moon. I don't know if we met that energy requirement of, uh, 21.2 gigajoules. Um, but I'm willing to try it again. We got some time on that contract, and the one we're going to complete here in, uh, just a while is going to pay out pretty handsomely. So we are, uh, like I said, man, <laughs> I, I, I can't fast forward time any faster than that because uh, we keep dipping below 100 kilometers. Which I guess I could adjust, I just don't care to. So I'm gonna speed this footage up for you guys in post. We'll see if I can't get a more interesting view angle. Uh, this'll work. Watch, yep, Earth set, Earth rise. All right, <laughs> we'll speed this up. Don't get epilepsy. Pick you guys up in a minute. Huh. I have just noticed that our uh, countdown timer is not uh, counting. One day, 18 hours, 59 minutes, 42 seconds is still... And none of our counters are counting, are they? Well, that's just interesting. Well then. We're going to see about this. So uh, I'm going to reload the craft and see if that helps anything. Um, Back in just a few. All right, well, we are back, and uh, I just basically went to the launch complex and fast forwarded for about two days, full well knowing that should fill the contract, and sure enough, it did. And uh, we could actually stay here if we wanted to for 86 more days to get this uh, crude record, but I, I don't think we're going to do that. I would like to get paid for this one so that I can worry about uh, this one down here. Uh, our little impactor contract. So now that all of our previous requirements are met, we can start plotting for home. Which, um, we're orbiting that way, aren't we? Great. <laughs> Just wanted to double check. I'm going to see uh, how well MechJeb likes this. Probably not even a little bit, but that's fine. All right, so let's go ahead and get ourselves uh, angled. Well, first, let's bump some fuel around. No actual point in doing this, just so we know. But that brings our total delta V to uh, 1555 meters per second. We have 871 to go on this burn, so uh, it looks like all of our goofing off here around the moon was uh, not to be fatal. Not today, anyway. I think I have a reserve of uh, N2O and nitrogen. Uh, no, I don't. It's all N2O and MMH. So, <laughs> if, uh, oop, yeah, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and fly right past that, that node there. That was, 
That was perfect. God, make sure it didn't gonna deny me the contract now. No, okay, good. <laughs> that check mark is solid. All we have to do is land or splash down, which I am fairly confident in our ability to do. That part of this spacecraft has been tested, although not from a lunar return. But uh, the heat shield's rated for it, so I really don't foresee it being much of a problem. All right, and we'll just uh, complete most of an orbit here. All right. I wonder how long this burn's going to take. Of course, it says uh, not applicable because the fuel tanks were locked. But I don't think it could be that long. I think three minutes of lead time is too much. I think three minutes of lead time might be a bit too much. If we're a little behind the node, then uh, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. We're probably going to have to make a correction anyway. Let's ullage in our engine. Come on. Yeah, I know. This thing, as it sits right now, weighs about 20 tons. It takes a little while to ullage things. Very stable. Ignition. And burn will take 3 minutes 45 seconds. So we'll just uh, adjust our angle in there. The moon's far side basin. Crew reports not by home specific and neither EVA reports. That makes me quite sad. Oh well. <laughs> We're in motion anyway. Not much we can do. Alright, well, I'm just going to speed through the rest of the spur and I'll pick you guys up in a second. Alright, I'm going to get that node out of the way. 784. Four six six seven. So I'm just going to use thrusters to tune that down to a uh, re-entry profile. Uh, I'm thinking something, something around 70 kilometers should do it. Yeah, it's taking a bit longer than I expected it to. Meh, no big deal. Okay. Ooh, 52. That's a bit low. So again, just using the RCS thrusters, I'm going to try to tune that best as I can. About uh, 69 kilometers. Looks good to me, and we'll just uh, tune the rest of it a bit later. So, uh, yeah, just make sure that's that decouple. And we don't need to fire those. They'll just burn up and die. And those are our parachutes, which... God, I hope I have the setting for these right. Uh, that should be a primary altitude 3500. Okay, cool. All right, well, uh, let's just bring them home, shall we? Uh, lovely bit of curly queuing. Goodbye, moon. Until we're out of your SOI. That's a pretty interesting shot. All right. Not out of your SOI yet. Yep, no, this is going to take some time. We're going to speed through about three days worth of work here. Oh, none of those left Earth's SOI. Yeah, okay. I'm still looking at Moon. But yeah, they're all stuck here at Earth. And here we go. And yes, our periapsis is still 69.517 kilometers. I'm hoping that's going to be deep enough to uh, deorbit us in a single pass. Mm. I'm not quite sure. Wow. Just trying to turn a little bit to point to uh, our retrograde vector has increased it to dang near 80 kilometers. Holy crap. All right. So we'll just uh, bump the thrusters here. Oh, wrong way. I need to uh, speed up in a retrograde vector. Yeah, 65. That, let's just uh, bring them on home. Yeah, we're going to be there in like 12 hours. That's pretty awesome. 
Oh, don't disappear on the earth. That's not cool. All right, we are one hour from our periapsis. Man, that is a very high periapsis. All right, so I'm just going to transfer a bit of the uh, life support. We'll lock you open just in case. In, in, in. And top off some of our supplies. Yeah, everything here is... Nope, there we go. Of course, look for the ones that have the buttons under them. Those are the ones you can use. Alright, and I guess we'll unlock this and get ourselves pointed to retrograde. And of course, that's going to change our periapsis significantly. Nope, yeah. Of course, it's right above us. No big deal. Yeah, you can go away now. Alright. Where do we think we're going to come in? Uh, by the time we get there, it's probably going to be a solid ocean kind of landing. Good enough for me. Splashdowns are traditional or something, right? So what I meant to check for was a day-night side. But uh, it looks like we'll be at night for most of it. We may cross the, the uh, Terminator during re-entry, which would be kind of neat to see, honestly. So is that. Welcome home. Well, almost. I'll worry about you guys being home when you're actually home. All right. Let's let's go ahead and get things angled correctly, and let's arm our parachutes. Arm. Arm. Armed. Armed. Okay. And uh, let's make sure our thruster controls are on, are open. And they have adequate fuel. Excellent. I'm going to just angle down a bit and go ahead and separate the service module. Well, come on. No, you go there. Thank you. Alright. It's been real. Nope, nothing. There we go. Yeah, there we can see it floating nicely away. All right, uh, turn descent mode on, something I've never done before. And we'll just uh, see which way angles. I'm assuming they're going to want to come in sitting right side up. That just seems like the appropriate descent profile to have for a descent mode. And hopefully the G's won't uh, kill anyone. All right, well, let's uh, let's get this show on the road, shall we? And of course, it'd be really cool to just watch that explode. All those other nice things. All right, well, we are in the atmosphere, somewhat officially. Hundred and thirty some odd kilometers. Well, it's hundred and twenty now. I'm a really good commentator. I always forget to disable the screen shake, so I have a feeling that when that thing goes, it's going to cause a lot of violent shaking. And for that, I do apologize. Ooh. <laughs> That's nice. Yep, there it goes.
Well, we didn't litter. And isn't that what matters? Whoa! I hope this is descent mode doing its thing. That does look like an unhealthy angle. Easy descent mode. Alright, here we go. Uh, G load is pretty respectable. 1G currently. Yeah, it looks like 1.2. Oh man, we're about to hit our periapsis. Maybe I should have come in a lot deeper. Yeah, we're climbing again. Well, it's a good thing we have lots of life support. Though I am going to turn off one of our fuel tanks. to uh, conserve thruster fuel. Um, electric charge. Shouldn't be a problem. We've got massive amounts of battery. And it should last us no problem for... Once again, take us seven hours to get to our uh, apogee. We don't need descent mode on currently. Hmm. Well, <laughs> did not see that one coming. No point in waiting around. Let's just go ahead and get this thing done. Bring our resource manager up. I would like to monitor electric charge and all of the other nice things. Turn our RC jets, jets off for the time being. Alright, well, we've got about uh, six hours to wait before we can... Uh, before we'll hit atmosphere again. Really, that's before we hit our periapsis. So hopefully we'll be doing a little bit of braking before then. Um, yeah, I know this is actually a total screw-up on my part for not setting my re-entry angle appropriately enough, but I should say that this was the original plan for Apollo, was for them to do a braking pass in the atmosphere and then pass around again to re-enter, but they overbuilt the heat shield that they just said, hey, we can just go at it all at once. And so they did. So uh, I'm keeping it even older school something. I don't know. <laughs> you can't judge me. All right. Yeah, it looks like we should have enough electric charge by the time we hit Atmo. We are two hours out from our perigee. As long as I don't fast forward through it on accident, which I am totally about to do. You know, what's one more lap, really? Say, this mission's only in its second week. <laughs> They've been out for 14 days. Oh, yes, we are atmospheric. Great. Turn descent mode on. Uh, unlock fuels. There we go. All right, now. Re-enter. Couple quick taps on the thrusters just to make sure. Periapsis is down to 64 kilometers. Are we doing the poop oceans thing again? I thought we fixed that, or is that just cloud cover? And I'm over land. 
Oh, well, nope. I'm coming off the coast of China. Alright. Yeah, this is probably not the best idea using physics time warp. Yeah, we have started ablating. There's the thermal effects I was looking for. Alright, come on. There's our plasma trail. Come on. Do you orbit? You can do it. Started climbing again. Down to about a uh, three hour orbit now instead of a six hour orbit. Uh, there might be enough atmosphere to bring that down a bit more. Hmm. That's very interesting. Because, yeah, I've done passes at similar altitudes that have deorbited, just never while using descent mode. So this is a very interesting experiment in how well descent mode does at generating lift off the bottom of that heat shield. That is very interesting and way more effective than I would have given it credit for. It's very interesting indeed. So yeah, it looks like a, uh, a third pass. Now you can feel free to make fun of me for this. I definitely should have approached a lot lower had I known how effective descent mode was. That's worth appreciating for a second or two. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's get out to our apogee. It's about an hour away. I bet they're kind of sick of this. <laughs> Alright, uh, we should be at Apogee and facing to prograde, seeing as how we're facing retrograde at uh, perigee. But I am still watching the counter, just to make sure. I, uh, I'm just going to uh, come out of time warp and lower our periapsis a bit. Through magical thruster power, alright. 58 kilometers. Now watch that be too low and everybody burns up and dies. I'm going to feel absolutely horrible. That's why uh, single crewed missions are typically my forte. Killing one Kerbal at a time can be uh, explained away. Killing three, especially when you've got uh, the super famous Valentina here at the controls. So really I can just blame her. You should have known better, Valentina. You should have known what periapsis was going to work. Or your, at least your engineer should have. Or the scientist, maybe. Somebody up there has way more hand in this than I ever did. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Alright, uh, and let's... Hopefully this will be our last pass. There's Atmo. 
So I guess I'm doing this descent mode thing wrong, and I should uh, wait a little bit before turning it on, or am I doing it right and I just wasn't low enough? Things you think I would have learned before getting into episode 230-something. <laughs> All right. All our fuels are open, yeah? Okay. Good. Let's just get in there and get it done. We should be ablating soon. All right. Come on, Val, bring him home. All right. Checked that. Uh, uh, we might make it off the coast of India. And G load is still pretty easy. Right around 1G. Please deorbit. And we're climbing again. Apparatus is down to one million. Oh, come on, so close. So close. I'm pretty sure that Apparatus is going to get to within the atmosphere. I shouldn't need to use thrusters. There it is. We're coming home. So I'm just going to leave descent mode on. Because uh, while we are climbing, we <laughs> we're not going to go very far. Apoapsis is four minutes away. It's currently reading at 83 kilometers and falling. But we are going to climb a bit, so there is going to be kind of a skip. Yeah, climbing, climbing, climbing. No big deal. Oh man, please don't run out of MMH and N2O. I wonder if I can turn those thrusters off. No, no, nope, cannot turn those thrusters off. I cannot use time warp, which is super wasteful on fuel, but we're down to about uh, 47 units of each. I guess those are measured in liters and uh, we're still moving at 7,000 meters per second might need some of that to keep us angled correctly still climbing huh all right come on come back home And descending again, from 82 kilometers altitude, 6.9 kilometers per second current speed.
<laughs> I'm sure that's not copyright infringement, right? <laughs> Just a little wink and a nod. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and get them into the water and home. Yeah, uh, yes, jettison heat shield. It will help us slow down a little bit more because we don't have that extra weight. But watching it uh, tumble itself into the ocean is always fun. Those things fly a lot better than you think they would. <laughs> and splash. So, well, after just uh, a few hiccups with this mission, some of them being not my fault, other, others of them being uh, not knowing how to use descent mode, uh, we are able... Well, I should probably wait until they, yeah, splash down. Landers splash down on Earth several times. But, contract complete. Uh, crew lunar, low lunar orbit, uh, we're going to get paid for that. These three are all going to get uh, nice commendations for dealing with me and all these other nice things. And uh, really, we just need to figure out what to do about that seismometer experiment. Do we try to land another seismometer and uh, just keep belting things at the moon until we fail the contract anyway? Or uh, do we just count that one as completed? Because uh, we fulfilled the spirit of it, even if, not, um, even if it wasn't going to give us credit for it. Or should we give it another attempt and see if we can't uh, get it to work. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I'll see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.